Andre, uh, we, we, I think we were all expecting a great fight tonight between you two guys, two yeah. tough opponents. We got one. Uh, yeah. How did you feel about things tonight? Uh, I felt good, actually. You guys just reminded me. I need to text. I need to send this text out. I, I, I mean, I feel like fight of the night, right? Like, I mean, or close, right? We, I mean, we were saying it from, from the beginning. We were saying, like, you saw it at weigh-ins. Every step of the way, Bill Aljo and I were saying, like, we're going to put on a show. That's just what we do. And we, he, he was kind of saying that he, I could tell he was a little pissed off that you guys didn't give him much love or give the fight much love. You know, I know it's a big card. There's big names on the card. But he, he, he felt like, and I, I, I agree with him, that our fight should have got a little more coverage because we were going to put on a show. And, and, you know, if you know anything about fighting, then that's what we were going to do, and that's what we did. You send out your text there? Yeah, uh, we're talking about bonuses, so I'm a little, hold on just a minute. If, if anybody, your teammate might have stolen it from you. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, honestly, man, that, that fight was badass. I'll say this, dude, a song is a, song is a fucking gangster, man. That kid is, he's, he's, he works his ass off. He's, he's, he's exciting. Um, I love watching the kid fight. And honestly, Sandhagen stylistically is one of my favorite people to watch fight as well. So um, I love that they got to put on a show. I wish that I wish they would have got to finish that fight. But, um, man, I think both those dudes should hold their head up high. That's beautiful, man. Both those guys are real fun to watch, and they put on a show. It was actually 2-2 two -two on two of the cards as well. Yeah, I thought it was a really tough fight. I mean, it's one of those fights, like, I, I'm obviously biased because I have a teammate fighting. Um, but I, I, I really hold – Stan Hagen in high regard, man. I, I really, I really like the guy a lot. So, I'm not a good judge, though. I'm just not like when I'm when I'm into a fight. I'm like, I'm also so biased. Like if one of my teammates is fighting, they could it could be a 10-8 round for the other guy, and I'll fucking still call, like I'm 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 biased. You know what I mean? When I'm watching my teammate fight uh, in that in that moment, like I'm, it's not my job to commentate. It's not my job to to judge. Like if it were, I could be neutral, but. In this, scene, in this scenario, like, I just got done fighting. I'm watching my friend fight. Energy's high. Like, you know, it's hard, it's hard not to be a little biased. But I thought, I thought they had a beautiful fight, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud, of, proud of Song for the way he handled it. Uh, and I'm happy for Corey. Nice. Uh, as far as Bill goes, I mean, obviously you knew he was a tricky fighter. He's kind of wild in there, a little bit unpredictable at times. I mean, did anything you do in there surprise you tonight? No, he didn't do anything that surprised me. Actually, that's not true. He shot. I didn't expect him to shoot. Um, and I'm a good wrestler. There have been times where maybe I didn't show that off as much as I should, but I, I can wrestle my ass off. I started as a wrestler. So, um, you know, he didn't take me down. It wasn't even close, but I, <clears throat> I respect that he tried to mix it up, that he tried to shoot. You know, that's not his wheelhouse. So um, it shows the evolution of the game. And uh, shot his, 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 trying to take me down surprised me. Um, the amount of blood that he dripped into the side of my ear surprised me. That was fucking surprising. Uh, I had a, like a legitimate like minute and a half after the fight where I couldn't hear anything. It felt like I dove into a pool. Like there was so much of his blood in my ear that I couldn't hear anything out of my left ear, and it took me like a minute and a half, two minutes to get it out, and this big blood clot fell out of my ear, and none of it was my blood. That is gross. That's why you should stay in school, kids. <laughs> stay in school. Uh, it looked like you, you know you're always trying to like put it all together for a full 15 minutes, right? But it, it, felt, it looked like you were feeling confident out there. I mean, did it feel good? I just had fun. I told my, I told my coach, I told my coach, Danny Castillo, who is an is a older brother to me, and he's seen me through all these highs and lows in this sport, and I've given, myself, I've given my soul to this. Like, I, I, love this, I love this game. I've given everything I am to this. And I, I looked at him before we walked out, and I said, we've done it every way. And tonight we're gonna have fun. Like that's what we're gonna do. Tonight we're gonna have some fucking fun. I've tried it every way. I felt every emotion. I've had every high and low. You guys have watched me grow up in this sport, in this company, and I, I, I love this. I love this game. I love this company. And um, I looked at my coach. I said, we're gonna have fun tonight. That's what we're gonna do. We've done it every other way. And I, there have been a lot of times in my life where I didn't like who I was. And I didn't like what I saw in the mirror. And you know, fighting was as much about self-destruction as it was self-improvement. I, I, I didn't, I didn't love myself, you know. And this is the one of the first times in my life where I like the person I see in the mirror, and I treat myself like someone whose happiness I'm responsible for, and I deserve to be happy. Like for the first time, I look at myself and I feel that. And so I think, I think that affects the way I fight now. I think it affects the way I go into these things, like. I'm, I'm so grateful to be where I'm at, and I'm, I owe so much to fighting, and I love this shit so much. 
like, from now on, we're going to have some fucking fun. That's awesome. I did want to ask you about the third round because obviously, you know, back control, but I don't know if I've ever seen more effective punching back. Dude. At least it looked like they were landing pretty firm. No, I mean, it was all the top of the head. It didn't hurt. I actually, we were having some fun. He, like, I was just getting annoyed because I, I didn't want to give it the position, and he keep fucking punching me back in the front of the head and, like, on the forehead. So I'm, it's not going to do anything. It's just pissing me off. You know, it's just like, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to freak out and risk the position. So he wants to punch me so that I give up position. And I want him to, I want him to his, stop fucking punching me, obviously, or I want him to, to spaz out so I can get some good hand control. And he's punching me, and I just stop at one point and go, you hit like a fucking pussy. And I, like, <laughs> I'm trying to get him, even though he's socking me in the top of the head, like, I'm trying to get him to do something stupid, and he's just hammering away. I'm like, all right, man. And the, I, I just I wanted, to, I wanted to do more from that position, but I wanted to make sure because I knew that it was a close fight, I needed to maintain that back position. Um, I don't think it was a split decision close fight. Like, I think it was pretty, like, when I say close, I mean competitive. I don't think it was a split decision. I think I clearly won that fight. It was competitive, but uh, these judges are, I don't fucking know what these judges are looking at, man. Like, I don't know. I mean, thank, I thank God they didn't rob me, but, dude, it's, they don't, they got to stop trying to scare me. Then. Well, one judge, get, one and two, you took round one on all the cards. He took round two on all the cards, and the split was because one judge gave him round three, I guess, presumably because of those punches. I just, I'm just like, okay, you, let's talk about it. Let's fucking, let's get, we're talking, let's get down to it. What is closer, what is a more significant threat to finishing a fight? A really naked choke. My hand under his throat, ready to strangle him, or him punching me in the top of my forehead from two inches away. It's like, what? And, if, and if a judge legitimately looks at that and says that he was closer to winning that, the fight than me in that third round, fuck that guy. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, I wish I had a more eloquent thing to say, but you don't, if you think that punches from, from he, here is a more legitimate fight ending threat than a rear naked choke from the back you shouldn't be judging fighting and that's just my opinion what, what the fuck do i know i've only been doing this my entire life but uh <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, that type of stuff I, I thank god honestly thank god they didn't rob me thank, thank god they got it right but i think that we really gotta um have some accountability with these judges man and and have some some better calls Last thing for me, Andrea, we, we saw some emotion from you at the, at the close of the yeah. fight. I'm just kind of curious, I guess, how difficult this stretch has been for you. And, um, you know, I mean, did it nearly impact the fight and kind of kind of where you Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have said that, but I've been, I've been holding on to that for, for, uh, for a few weeks, and it all just comes pouring out. Man, I, I can't ex describe how, how much emotion is in that moment after a win like that. And, um, you know, a hard-fought fight. Excuse me, hard-fought fight weird split like I, you know the your emotions are just so fucking high and um it all just came kind of pouring out and and um it's been a really it's been a really tough couple of weeks man it has um i don't have you know we've talked about this before you guys have seen me at my highs and seen me at my lows i don't ever come out here and preach or like pretend to be a guy that has the answers i just know that um i just know that I'm thankful to have fighting. I'm thankful to have this. I'm thankful to have my coaches and my team and my my group of friends and my family. And um, I just want to make them proud. And if I can win fights and I can make them proud and I can I can stick to what I love and get to do this every day, that uh, almost everything else will work out, you know. And so that that's where I'm at. I, I'm trying to operate from a place of kindness and of gratitude in every situation and. It's working out so far. It's tough, you know, but it's working out so far, and and I just want to keep, I just want to keep, keep pushing forward. Andre, one quick one for me. On Wednesday, you said you're gonna fight and get some more tattoos. What yeah. are your next ones? Oh, I don't know. I gotta finish my back. I made a fucking terrible choice and started a giant back piece, and it's like, here's the thing. All the gratification of getting a new tattoo is getting a new tattoo. And then other people look at the tattoo and go, oh, that's fucking cool, man. Sick. And you, like, you get that when you get a new tattoo. But when you do a big piece, like you do, I did my whole shoulders to butt. So like all the compliments I'm going to get about, like I, I went through it, I got the tattoo, and now I'm a cool back piece guy, and all the people who are going to compliment me have complimented me. No one gives a fuck now. 
but I still have like 10 hours of tattooing. You know what I'm saying? Like I still have to shade it and color it and hot and white highlights and this and fucking that. And like, I have a solid eight to 10 more hours of pain and no gratification. Like it's good. It's, it's the same tattoo. You know what I'm saying? Like there's not going to be like, no one's going to be like, Oh cool. Like you got more done on the same tattoo. Like, so, um, that I'm going to go get my back finished. I'm going to be a man. And I'm going to finish that. Um, Fucking A, do I not want to? I'll tell you that right now. I want to start on something else. Uh, so I'm going to get my back tattooed. I'm going to go to Hawaii and um, surf terribly, but have fun doing it. And then I'm going to come right back and get right back into fight camp. And you guys will see me win a fight in December. That's the goal. That's the plan. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Andre, over here. Um, you mentioned that things are kind of different now. You know, you've matured. What changed? Let's not give me too much. <laughs> sure. I never said that I matured. No, I'm just kidding. Well, you sound mature. I'm trying. Yeah. What what changed? Is it just age, time? Did something happen that kind of clicked? I don't I don't know. Yeah, maybe a, a mix of things. Um, yeah, father time is undefeated. You know what I mean? And it's a weird because I growing up I didn't picture myself as a 32 year old. You know, like I I pictured myself like I I lived in a way that was so chaotic and self destructive for so long that I just was like, you know, when you're young you think you just like. You just live like a rock star, and then, like, you just explode, and that's it, and that's your story. You know, like, you, you don't. Like, you, you make choices, and you live with the consequences, and you learn, and you wake up one day, and you're like, oh, like, I'm a 30-year-old man, and I have to set an example for my nephews and my nieces and the people I love, and I want to be a good teammate. I want to be a good older brother. I want to be uh, a good dad one day. I want, I want to be a person that I like, you know? And so, yeah, I think, I think it's probably just time, but it's weird because it – I guess maybe it has been gradual, but to me it feels like overnight. Like I just woke up one day and was like, I don't want to do dumb shit anymore. Like, you know, it's like sounds so, it's, it sounds simple, but it really isn't. Like you wake up and you, you wake up and you just go, man, I want to like the person I see in the mirror. And so I'm going to make decisions that align with my core values. And I'm going to make the decisions that are the decisions, like the person I want to be, how would they make a this decision? The person that I want to be, how would they handle this situation? And and as long as you're moving in that direction, I think you find yourself in a, in a place that, that you like. And that's, that's all I've been doing. And just one more. You mentioned um, on the broadcast that Bill has a broken arm. Did he tell you that or did you feel that or what? Uh, yeah, I didn't feel it in the fight. He had a hell of a poker face. But after the fight, he's like, man, I think you broke my arm. Um, <laughs> that guy's fucking tough, dude. He's tough and he's tricky. And uh, it was an honor to share the octagon with him. But, yeah, I think he – I'm not sure. I, I don't I, – I, I can't confirm for sure that it's broken, but he, he, he told, after, told me after the fight, he's like, man, I think you, I think you broke my arm. Um, but, fuck, he, he did a good job in the fight. He didn't show any weakness in the fight. I, I had no idea. So um, shout out to Bill Algio, man, tough guy, and, and I'm excited to see what he does. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Andrew, uh, is it annoying that you're going to have to hear about MMA math uh, now with you, Algio, and Brito? No, fuck no. That's two wins for me. What are you talking about? Bill Algio beat... Bre Joe Anderson Brito, Bre Anderson, Joe Anderson Brito clipped me in the first 30 seconds. I didn't get the fucking fight, and now I just beat Bill Aljo. That's fucking, that's a win for me, player. That's uh, that. Uh, do the. I don't know how. However, you want to do that math, it equals me like this. I like ends that. up. I like. Uh, that. Congrats. You know what I'm saying? We talked about this. Didn't we talk about this earlier this week? I'm the light heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> I'm serious. I beat Artem Lobov. Artem Lobov beat whoever. There, I'll find the. I'll find the meme, but. I'm the light heavyweight champ of the world, so go ahead and fucking jot that down. Just one for me. You mentioned the the blood in the ear. Did that come when you had that rear naked choke attempt towards the end? When, and did you notice it at the time? Was yeah, that the kind yeah. of thing that you were like, I need to finish this. And were you thinking about that ear? Yeah, I was. It was disgusting. It was literally like someone took a dropper and was just squeezing blood into my ear canal. Like I can't describe to you the like. It was egregious. It was the amount of blood was that it was pouring. Whatever. I don't know if it was from my squeeze or just the angle, but all the blood from his face was just pouring inside my ear. Like, it felt like I jumped, when I got done with the fight, it felt like I jumped in a pool. You know, you got your ears clogged. And then for a minute and a half, I tried to get it out. And then a, by then it had like coagulated and a big clump of blood fell out of my ear. It was a fucking horror scene. Um, Did you say that's the grossest thing that's ever happened to you in a fight from another, uh, from someone that you were fighting with? 
Yeah, I mean, the whole sport's just kind of disgusting, isn't it, right? <laughs> like, we're all fucking sweaty and gross and bloody and just, like, spits flying and shit. People are cut open. It's just, the whole thing is fucking disgusting. I I've, I've, I've really struggle with OCD. Like, I'm very much a germaphobe. Like, I, I wash my hands manically. Like, I'm super conscious. Of, like, and I have to just turn that off because fighting is fucking disgusting. Um, so, yeah, I was, it was a literal nightmare. Because yeah. like, I'm pretty sure we saw you up here once with caked blood on your hand eating pizza that yeah. you were really loving after a post fight. Yeah, sometimes you got to just let go of your mental illness and just fucking get the job done. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when I get home, like I'll fucking clean every single surface and wash my hands until they're sore. And like, all, but when it's fight week, you just go, ah, ah, whatever. Like, all right, guys, pouring blood in my fucking ear. What, what can you do? You know, um, it's easier. It's easier to deal with that stuff when you get your hand raised at the end, though. So everything. Winning, winning fights solves everything. And it makes for a good story for your next comedy outing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Congrats on the victory. Thank you, brother. Cool. All done. Thank you, guys.